Thousands of Venezuelans protest and clash with the police after Sunday's disputed presidential election result. Eleven people, including three children, have been injured in Ukraine after Russian shelling devastates Kherson region. The first F-16 pilots trained in Romania complete their courses. Thousands rallied across Serbia to protest a lithium excavation project their country's government recently signed with the European Union. Protests were held simultaneously across the country following similar gatherings in the past weeks. The recent deal which was reached earlier this month concerning critical raw materials could reduce Europe's dependency on China. It could also have the effect of pushing Serbia, which has close ties to Russia and China, closer to the EU. The deal has been fiercely criticised by environmentalists who argue it would cause irreversible damage to the environment while bringing minimal benefits to Serbian citizens. The Serbian president has said that any excavation would not start until 2028 and that the government would seek firm environmental guarantees before allowing the digging. Thousands took to the streets of Venezuela to protest a disputed presidential election which kept the reins of the country in the hands of Nicolas Maduro. Maduro considers the results of the election a settled matter, but opposition candidate Edmundo González told a news conference he had proof to show that he was the winner of the election. Police used tear gas to disperse the protesters in parts of the country, some of whom in turn threw stones and other objects at officers. Two children were killed and nine were injured, six critically, after a knife attack at a children's dance workshop. A 17-year-old boy was arrested on suspicion of murder and attempted murder after the attack at the Taylor Swift themed event for children aged 6 to 10. Police said the motivation for the attack was unclear, but that it was not being treated as terror related. Eleven people were injured as a result of Russian attacks in the Kherson region, according to Ukrainian police. Three children were reportedly amongst the injured. Moscow's forces attacked the area with artillery, mortars and multiple launch rocket systems. The Russian military also used drones to drop explosives on targets. Residential, administrative and educational buildings were damaged along with critical infrastructure according to the regional authorities. A 63-year-old woman was reported to be hospitalised along with a 16-year-old who is in critical condition. The situation in the nation remains dire following Russia's invasion, but Ukraine is pushing back. They reportedly hit a military airfield about 1,800 kilometers into the Russian border, damaging a supersonic bomber plane, according to a Ukrainian military intelligence spokesperson. Israel said it was holding nine soldiers for questioning following allegations of abuse at a facility where Palestinians were held throughout the war in Gaza. Israeli media reports military police officers who arrived to detain the soldiers were met with protests and scuffles. Dozens of protesters came to show support for the soldiers, waving Israeli flags and chanting shame. The military has generally denied ill-treatment of detainees. Germany urgently requested its citizens to leave Lebanon amidst fears of a major Israeli military response to Saturday's deadly rocket attack on the Golan Heights. The nation updated its travel warning to Lebanon, saying that air travel could be cut off and that a further escalation of the conflict cannot be ruled out. Es gilt gerade in dieser angespannten Situation, aber auch weiterhin eine Eskalation und einen regionalen Flächenbrand zu vermeiden. 
Das machen wir auch immer wieder mit unseren Partnern deutlich. Alle Akteure sind aufgerufen, ihren Einfluss auf ihre Verbündeten in der Region zu nutzen. Das gilt insbesondere für Iran. The news comes as Israeli strikes continue to hit villages in southern Lebanon. Israel is considering its response to a rocket attack from Lebanon over the weekend that killed 12 children and teenagers in a town in Syria's Israeli-occupied Golan Heights. Hundreds gathered in the town that was attacked for the funeral of a 10-year-old boy that was killed. Since October the 8th, violence has flared across the border between Israeli troops and the Lebanese paramilitary group Hezbollah. Temperatures of more than 40 degrees Celsius and continuing wildfires are causing havoc in North Macedonia. The heat wave that arrived from Africa is devastating the country. Fires are blazing in national parks and burning houses to the ground. Firefighters, locals, police and military have been fighting the wildfires for weeks, with the scorching conditions expected to continue. At least two people have been killed and more than 100 injured after a train derailed in Russia's Volgograd region. The train, which was carrying 800 passengers, was traveling from Kazan to Adler when it collided with a cargo truck that had driven onto the tracks despite the approaching train signal, according to Russian railways. Russian investigators have opened a criminal probe into the possible violation of traffic safety rules and the operation of railway transport. The first F-16 pilots trained at the Vitesti Training Center in Romania have completed their courses and received their Mission Ready designation. Come on down. Hollywood is one of the first seven pilots who was trained at the center. He amassed nearly 500 flight hours in the seven years he'd been operating aircraft, but needed training to transition to the F-16 plane. Cu toate acestea, noi pe MiG-21 am zburat mereu la standard de NATO, așa că pentru noi probabil trecerea a fost mult mai ușoară decât uh, va fi pentru alte nații. The graduates will begin operating the aircraft in their assigned squadrons. They've all fought uh, in this class, both the Hornet and the Typhoon. So standing before you is, is a group of warriors that's going to enter the system, protect Romanian air sovereignty, and be great NATO partners. Romania now has a squadron of F-16 fighter jets with which the military will carry out air police missions. They were also raised from the ground for surveillance during Russia's latest attacks on Ukrainian ports on the Danube. The first nine of the 32 second-hand planes purchased from the Norwegian government have been delivered to Romania, and the others will be delivered in the next period. Forțele aeriene din țările de jos au pus la dispoziția centrului de pregătire pentru piloții de F-16 14 astfel de aeronave, 7 cu simplă comandă și 7 cu dublă comandă pentru antrenamentul cursanților. For the second day in a row, the training for the triathlon competition of the Paris Olympics has been postponed because the water quality of the Seine River just behind me is too polluted. The main events, the men's triathlon, is supposed to take place on Tuesday and the women's is supposed to take place the day after on Wednesday. So what happens in case uh, the water quality does not improve? Well, local authorities uh, are insisting that they'll just keep postponing until uh, the Seine becomes less polluted. However, let's say in the extreme case that it doesn't, well then the triathlon will become a duathlon. That means that triathletes will only compete in the cycling and running sections of the competition. So that means no swimming. And as for the marathon swimming events that are scheduled for August 8th and August 9th in the Seine River, well the city does have a plan B in case the water is still uh, too polluted. And that's uh, that the events will take place in a nautical stadium east of Paris. And if necessary, they 
the events could also be moved to where the canoeing and rowing uh, competitions are currently being held. Sofia Katzenkova reporting from Paris for your news. Sports fans battled the heat outside Olympic venues and fan zones across Paris as the French capital experienced scorching temperatures and cloud-free skies. Though the 2024 Olympic Games had a rainy beginning at the opening ceremony and some competitions had to be postponed, the weather has improved in recent days. We're being very smart. We have two bottles of water and the water here at the Games, the water in Paris, so you can drink it from the tap. It's wonderful and they have all the spigots around. So we're just keeping our bottles full and it's on a day like this, you have to do that because it's very hot. Enjoying the summer time in Paris at last. We have been waiting for this for many weeks and now we feel like uh, the, the summer has really started. Soaring temperatures will impact not only the athletes competing at the Games, but spectators, tourists and Parisian residents. Meteo France issued a recommendation to restrict going out in the hottest hours, to stay hydrated and to wear hats. Novak Djokovic has defeated Rafael Nadal in the second round of the 2024 Paris Olympics men's singles at Roland Garros. The match is likely to be the pair's final head-to-head -head contest after having played against each other 60 times in their careers. Djokovic and Nadal have won 46 Grand Slam singles titles between them, including 17 at the French Open. But while Nadal boasts two gold medals, Djokovic has not yet clinched Olympic victory.